What's going on guys? John Kelly here and today I'm going to talk to you about some items that I refuse to go on the trail without. Now understand, I'm not talking about ultralight gear. I'm not saying this is the lightest weight gear. I'm not even going to say this is the cheapest gear or the most expensive gear. I'm also going to tell you this is not part of my big three. This isn't my backpack, my sleep system, or my shelter system. These are just gear items that I won't go on the trail without. I've broken them down into three categories. Luxury, I won't leave home without it, and I don't think anybody should be on the trail without them. The first item that I wanna talk about that I will not go on the trail without is a luxury item, and that is my camp chair. And I mean, I will not go on the trail without it. I've been carrying one of these since about 2019, and since that time, I have gone on one trip where I didn't take the chair with me. And it was a huge regret. Uh, when we got to camp, everybody had a chair, and I sat on a log. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people, that's okay. But when you look around and see everybody reclining and comfortable in their chairs, and you're the one sitting on a log, knowing that your chair is at home, it's no good. Since that time, I have never gone on a trip without my camp chair. And so for my first item, I will never go on the trail without, it's always gonna be a camp chair. My next luxury item is definitely not lightweight, and it's something a lot of people just won't take on the trail with them, and that is a pillow. But specifically, it is the nine ounce pillow pillow. Now some people are gonna be like, why would you take a pillow that weighs nine ounces? Let me show you why. This is the pillow's thickness before you even blow it up. This thing is just stupid comfortable. I'm gonna get inside of this pillow and get a little more specific with you about why this is such a great pillow. As you can see, the outer fabric is a microfiber. It's very comfortable, it's very soft, uh, feels great against your face, plus it really does pick up heat really well. So it does keep your head and your face nice and warm as well. When you get into the pillow, you can see that inside of it is this little case that has two different things in it. You've got the air bladder, which is this orange part here. And then inside of that bladder on the other side, right there it is. There you can see that is the foam that is inside the pillow. This foam is so soft and so comfortable. It's porous, it's super soft, but it does have firmness to it and it's about an inch thick. This stuff is great. Like I said, on top of that then is an air bladder right here. This all goes inside of that case to make one of the most comfortable pillows you may ever use in your life. Now, I would consider this kind of a hybrid pillow. It's not just an air pillow that you just inflate. It's also not just a foam pillow like Thermarest has. That's a foam pillow a lot of other guys I know like to use. Talking to you, Dan Becker. If I'm sleeping in a hammock, I just put it right behind my head and it just kind of warms the back of my neck, kind of wraps around my head just a little bit, but there's still enough foam that it supports my head. And when I'm laying in a hammock, I don't necessarily want anything pushing my head forward. So for me, that makes this pillow fantastic. When I'm in a tent, I'm typically a side sleeper. So the ability to inflate this up to make it taller makes it much more usable when I'm in a tent. It's just such a great pillow. And I don't care that it's expensive and I don't care that it weighs a ton. I will never go on a backpacking trip without this pillow. So those two items were luxury items that I won't go on the trail without. The next two items are items that I just won't leave the house without. And the first one is this guy right here. This is my Benchmade Griptilian. I am a massive fan of this knife. It was a Christmas present, Christmas of 2019 and it has not come out of my pocket since. This knife gets used every single day, whether I'm on trail or not. And so, come on, that's just, I mean, that's just so cool. Like, seriously, who doesn't like a knife that just goes like that? Oh, there it is. One of the coolest features of the knife is the little knob that's on the knife that allows you to quick open it. Uh, that is really nice. Uh, it's nice not to have to do this to open your knife, but to simply take your thumb, 
course I would do that when I'm trying to talk about it. I am such a big fan of this knife. It's got an SV30 steel on it that is extremely strong, extremely durable, and it holds a blade. This thing is so strong, I actually use this to cut through vinyl flooring on a stage that I was helping build. The knife is extremely durable, it's extremely strong, and it weighs about 3.6 ounces. So it's not, <laughs> I've got fuzz on here. My hand up. A little bit of fuzz right there. A little bit of fuzz. Like I said, it's in my pocket every day, so who knows what else kind of fuzz and stuff gets in this thing. There's not a day that goes by that I don't use this knife, whether it's opening boxes, whether it's cutting through tile, whatever it is I'm doing, this knife seems to get used more than anything else I own. And so when I go backpacking, I like to pull this guy out and be able to use it to shave wood to make kindling. I like to use it if I need to make repairs in the woods, if I need to cut shock cord or any kind of cordage. Uh, it's amazing what you can find uses for a knife. I go backpacking with the Kentucky Boys, myself, Jeremiah Stringer, and backpacking with Jason. And when we go out, a lot of times Jason is bringing steaks for everybody. You gotta have a steak knife, and let's just be honest, that's the coolest steak knife you're ever gonna use. I, I don't go on trail without this knife. Uh, it gets used so much. That's why it is a non-negotiable for me anytime I leave my house, much less go on the trail. The next item is another one I will not leave my house without. I'm wearing it on my wrist right now, and that is my Sunto Baro 9 watch. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, you've got a watch, whoop de freaking do right? whoop de freaking do But the truth is the watch is a fantastic tool for me when I'm out in the back country. I got it last December, as in December of 2019, and it's not cheap. Uh, you, you want to save up for something like this. But there are some amazing features of this watch that I just can't get past. The fact that it has a built-in barometer might be the biggest. This past summer I was hiking in the Smoky Mountains with my friend Josh and while we were hiking through the woods my watch goes off, an alarm goes off and I look at it and it says storm approaching. There weren't a lot of clouds in the sky, it wasn't really gray out but we were like okay so we took our backpacks off, threw on all our rain gear, put the backpacks back on, hiked down the trail and in five minutes there was a deluge of rain. This huge storm hit and we got rained on the rest of the day and the watch warned us. The barometer on it is fantastic. It does a great job of letting you know when the pressure in the air is changing so that you're able to prepare for things like storms because if you're someone like me and you've done a lot of backpacking, you know for a fact that weather can change in a heartbeat. And when it does, if you don't have something to prepare you for those weather changes, your gear could get destroyed. You could just have a miserable experience. You're gonna get soaked. It's really nice to have a piece of gear that can warn you. Now that's not all that this thing does. There are a lot of great features. One of those being intelligent battery modes. You can actually set the watch up to preserve the battery while using only the features that you want to use. What's great about that is that your battery can last multiple days. When I was using an Apple watch, I was constantly having to recharge my watch at the end of the day, and I simply don't have to do that when I'm using this one as long as I charge it right before I leave on a trip. It also has built-in GPS. You can load maps onto the watch. I just used the map functions a couple weeks ago in the Red River Gorge, and it worked fantastic. It's great to know you have that option in case your battery on your camera goes out, or there's some kind of a malfunction, or the GPS isn't picking up on it. It's nice to be able to have something as a backup to your GPS unit that you're using, and the watch really works well for that. Besides just the intelligent battery modes, besides the barometer, besides just the GPS, you've also got over 80 sports modes. You've got a, a heart rate monitor on your wrist, and not only that, but it is water resistant up to 100 meters. It's a fantastic watch, and then when you throw on top of it that it's a smartwatch that will connect with your phone and let you know when someone's calling. It'll let you know when you get a text message. It'll keep you up to date on your social media. This watch really is an all-in-one, and it will never leave my wrist when I step out of my house, and it will always wear it whenever I go out on the trail. The next item on this list is another one that I won't go on the trail without, but it's becoming more of one that I won't leave home without. And 
I really think it's important that everybody has one of these whenever they go on trail for multiple reasons, and that's a satellite communicator. For me, it's the Zolio uh, satellite communicator. I'm a huge fan of the satellite communicator. I've now been using it for almost eight, nine months. It's been on every trip, every trail. It's never failed. It has killer battery life. And now I've started taking this more than just on the trail with me, but I've actually been taking it and, and installing it in my truck so that if I'm in an area where there's no phone service and something happens, I can still get a hold of someone to come get me. Also, if you're married like I am, your spouse probably wants you to check in when you're out in the woods, and this gives you the opportunity to do that. I did a whole video explaining this and all the features of it. You can check that in the card right here, but a satellite communicator, whether it's the Zolio or it's a Garmin inReach or a Bivy stick or whatever it is that you're using, uh, I would say I would never go on a trail without one of these. The last item on my list and one that is a non-negotiable for me when I go backpacking is a paper map. I think that paper maps are a necessity when you go out into the woods. Let's just shoot straight, technology can fail technology can fail and then you're stuck if you've got nothing else. Having a concrete piece of something that you can hold in your hands that you don't have to worry about having battery power is vital when you go into the backcountry. I always make sure I have maps with me and I would say if you've never used a map before, you don't understand topography, get online and learn it. I've got a friend who I go backpacking with all the time who I talked about earlier in this video. His name's Josh. Josh is a former Marine and this year he's going to teach me how to use not only topography on maps, but to pair that with a compass so that no matter where I am, I can look at a map, I can take a compass and I can triangulate exactly where I am using those two items. These are skills that may seem archaic to a lot of people, but the truth is if you can do that, you're going to be a whole lot safer when you're on trail and the people that you're hiking with are going to be safer. Paper maps, they're not expensive. A lot of them you can download. You can go to apps like Gaia, get online, download the maps of your trips that you're planning. You can plan the trips right there online, download the maps, print them out, and you can take those with you. I can't emphasize enough that if you want to be safe on the trail, it's important that you learn how to read maps and that you always take a paper map with you when you go on trail. So those are the six things that I never go on trail without. What are some things that you guys go on trail with every time you go out? Now, I will say, you might not agree with me on some of these items and that's okay. That's the beauty of backpacking. Backpacking is a personal thing that's designed around you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about hiking, backpacking gear, and enhancing the backpacking experience. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can find out anytime one of these videos drops. Also, go over to my Instagram. There you'll find pictures from recent trips, what's going on in my life, my upcoming knee rehab, which it looks like that's gonna be a very real thing. You'll also find out great information about the backpacking podcast that I do with Jeremiah Stringer. It's one of the best hours of the week. We're releasing new episodes every Wednesday and doing live streams every single Monday night at 8.30 p.m. So be sure to check that out. But until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I'll catch you on the next go around.